just why? Just one moment. One moment, please, ladies and gentlemen. Just one moment. There we go. That's the perfect atmosphere for this sad, terrible occasion. Another one of our friends has been ripped. That's right. They have been ripped apart into absolutely tiny pieces. And it's all because of that damn Monokuma. That disgusting son of a gun just won't let us be happy, will he? He can't just leave us in peace. He has to leave us in pieces. Oh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Mekumaru, our beautiful hero, our team leader has gone. He's been ripped for the second time. A double rip. How could someone be so heartless as to rip this man for a second time? It just makes me so mad! But Paparazzi, you need to calm down, baby. You need to calm down because you gotta solve this case. You gotta find out who ripped Nekumaru, Mekumaru, and left him in pieces. R.I.P. Sweet Prince, R.I.P. But you can be rest assured, baby, that you got the best boy on this case. Officer Booty Lover is the ultimate detective, and he will crack this case. Hey, 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 Ron Rasmuski here, and welcome back to Danganronpa 2. And oh, baby, it's time to get all the evidence together over Nekumaru's rippery known as... He may be resting in various different pieces, but that does not mean that we get a timeout. We've got a case to solve, and it's gonna start right here, baby! Guys, if you're hyped for this episode, then please hit that like button. It really, really is appreciated. Let's shoot for 1,000 beautiful likes. Each and every single episode at the moment is killing over 1,000 likes. So I just knocked my desk there because I'm that damn excited. So let's keep it up, baby, and we'll dive straight in. Woo! Nekumaru, my sweet prince, I will solve this case. You bet your sweet metallic hide that I will spank it in the afterlife. Once I have solved this case, that got very strange all of a sudden. I don't know where I was going with that one. Nekumaru? No. No, 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 no. This is a lie, right? This is just... Based on our situation and the body discovery announcement, it's unfortunate, but there's no doubt that another killing has happened. Killing? I can't deny this truth, but why? As usual, that was the only word I could squeeze out. Hey! Hey, what happened? I can't. Move. Move. Move it! I can't he push me aside and run straight over to Nekumaru. Oh no. Oh. Why? Why is Nekumaru? Why did he have to die again? Exactly. Why did he have to die again? Who would do this to him twice? Damn it. I never paid you back. I never paid you back. For your help last time. Can't make Papa cry this early. <laughs> She stays so damn strong, but then, right at the end, man, she just can't hold it together. Damn it! How cruel! This is just too much. Why? Why did Nekumaru have to die? Though his appearance was drastically altered, he still came back to us. Oh. Why? Why does this always happen? No matter how much I try to stop it, this is always the result. Is this something I can't stop? Damn it! Hey, Nekumaru got killed, right? That announcement means what I think it means, right? I won't forgive hey, you. who did it? Who killed Nekumaru? Looks like someone is finally pumped up! You. you. Hey, you know who did it, right? Who killed Nekumaru? What? what do you want? Don't get mad at me all of a sudden! In fact, I'm the one who should be mad! Yeah, I went to a lot of trouble to bring Nekumaru back from the dead, and he already let the killer break him? <laughs> How disappointingly foolish. Maybe he had a few screws loose? <laughs> you know, cause he's a robot! You talking about Nekomaru? I can't, I can't down! Phew. Use those powers that your anger has awoken for the investigation! Uh, um, Monokuma, is there any way you can fix Nekumaru? Hmm. Hmm, I could have fixed him if his head was still attached, but since he's like this, it's impossible. Plus, the last time this happened, it was my fault. But this time, the killer is one of you guys. Yep. I'm under no obligation to fix him for you. I guess it was a waste of time to ask him. In other words... A life that dies once will never return twice. That's reality for so... you. So, even though it's getting a little boring, let's get on with the usual yes. routine. Come on, file. Thank you very much. Give me all your deeds, baby. Also, this is a gift. From me to you. Red bean bread and milk! Oh, finally, you're not gonna starve us anymore, buddy! Huh? <laughs> I brought you guys a present since the killing went off without a hitch, besides. <laughs> if I don't feed you, you guys probably won't last long enough for a class trial! 
I'll definitely find out who killed Coach Nick and Maru. And you. after I kill that guy, you're next. I'll definitely destroy you. So even though it sucks, I'm going to eat first. If I don't get some food in me, I can't unleash my full of power. You're right. If we're gonna avenge Mekumaru, we gotta regain as much energy as we can. Damn it, I'm gonna eat. See? Come on, Hajime, you too. Yeah, you're right. I've been waiting to eat something for so long. Damn it, I never expected I'd feel this terrible when I finally ate again. Hey, hey! Eat it slowly! It'd be bad if you got a stomach egg. We ate our food in silence. Slowly, my blood began coursing through my veins. I started to slowly regain feeling in my numb body. Phew. Isn't that wonderful? Looks like you've got your energy back. Then let's hurry up and start already! Do it! I I'm the killer and you! I'm gonna beat the shit out of both of you with my bare hands! However... Um, regardless of whether we start or not, what has happened to the others? They appear to be extremely late. You mean the guys in the strawberry house? Now that you mention it, no one's here. Mm. That's weird. They should have come to Grape Tower because we had Monokuma Tai Chi. Unbelievable. Jeez, how unacceptable. I never expected all of you to ditch Monokuma Tai Chi. Honestly, it was way beyond my expectations. What are you gonna do? Well, since it happened anyway, I guess it is what it is. Uh, everyone ditched? Does everyone include us too? Do your best. <laughs> now do your best to investigate. I'll see you again at the class trial. Hmm. I hear. I hear something. Uh, huh? What do you hear? Huh? Could it be Nekumaru? Damn it. Of course not. He's already dead. Yo. Oh well. Now's not the time to worry about that sound. That sound. What are you talking about? I don't hear anything. Um. And what about Gundam and the others? Is it all right that we have not summoned them here? Huh. They're going to come here soon anyway. Now's not the time to worry about them. You're right. They should have heard that body discovery announcement already. They'll probably come soon. Maybe. Yep. Then we should start the investigation soon. Yeah, you're right. I gotta do it. I have to do it. I have to search this investigate time, baby! Here we go! First, I need to look at the Monokuma file. Find out exactly what happened to him. Monokuma file 4, no! Nekumaru, he was, uh, 6 foot 4. He's a big man. He's a heavy man. He had blood type A and his birthday was February the 22nd. Never to celebrate a birthday ever again. Poor Mekumaru. The victim is Nekumaru Nidai, aka Mekumaru, after his robotic transformation. His body was discovered in Grape Tower, which is inside the funhouse. His head is severely damaged and beyond repair, so that shall be considered as the cause of death. Somebody ripped his head off like a savage. They literally tied him up, tripped him over, and then ripped his head off. They are brutal. Despite the fact that his arms and legs are dismembered, these limbs were actually designed to be detachable and seem they were separated due to a severe impact. Aside from that, several other areas of his body are damaged. Because of this, many of his functions seem to have shut down. Well, like his bloody life is shut down. His arms and legs were detachable, and it looks like they were separated due to severe impact. Does that mean Nekumaru was repeatedly clubbed with some sort of weapon? But was there a reason they needed to club him over and over again? Hmm, uh, Monokuma file 4 has been added to the truth bullet section of the book. Okay, so we've got a hammer over here, which looks like it might have been used to smack him over the back of the head, and then have they tied him up after that? Or have they used the wire that's attached to his feet as, as, as a sort of trip wire to make him fall over first? Hmm, I tell you what, whoever has clubbed him over the back of the head has got to have used an un like unimaginable amount of strength to knock down a robot giant at six foot four. They would have really had to have hated him and wanted him dead. The brutes. Right, let's check out the hammer first and see what's going on over here. An enormous hammer has been carelessly left on the floor. It's like it's suspicious because it stands out so much. Seems far too obvious oh, cool. that. Perhaps that hammer is the weapon that broke Nekumaru? I do believe a weapon of that size is capable of damaging Nekumaru. Hmm, this hammer is the weapon, but it looks a little too clean. It's almost like it's new or something. It's like it's been placed there on purpose. It is strange, no? Also, where did the killer obtain this hammer? Prior to now, I do not believe I have ever seen an object like this. Was it hidden somewhere? Good point. There's no supermarket in here. I wonder where they obtained it from. There, the truth will- Oh! Well, we know! In that, that house! Remember how it was the house that Chiaki stopped us from going in, by the way? Because she, there was a weapon in there, and she didn't want us to get it, because perhaps she might have already, you know, 
You know, she might have she might have already. You know, if I tell you what, if Chiaki's done it, I will not be happy. I will not be happy. Anyway, that's where the weapon could have possibly come from. Let's go and check out his body, I suppose. Let's go check it out straight away. It's Nekumaru's body. It's cruelly broken. Like, they have properly destroyed him. It looks like he's been so severely damaged that even his head was dented. That'd be the fatal wound, right? But Nekumaru's robot body should have been durable enough to withstand any assault. For Nekumaru to be this damaged, it could only mean whoever attacked Nekumaru didn't hold back. Now is probably not the best time to think about this, but I guess Nekumaru was really transformed into a robot, huh? I was getting used to the idea, but now that I think about it, robots are definitely unusual. Well, it doesn't matter if he was a robot or not, either way, Nekumaru was still killed. Absolutely ripped, by the way! It's definitely strange, isn't it? Huh? What is? Well? If they want to kill him, they could have just destroyed his head. Why'd they destroy his entire body too? Maybe they didn't know how to kill a robot, so they damaged him all over? Yeah. But they went against Coach Nekumaru, he ain't the type to die easily! They obviously didn't fight him head on, but even then, he wouldn't have left himself open to attack. You're right. In fact, that's the biggest mystery. Nekumaru was even stronger after he became a robot. I can't think of anyone who'd be capable of killing him. Anyway, this alone isn't enough information. I should investigate a little more thoroughly. In investigate his pants! Investigate down his pants! Investigate down his pants! Anyway, we've got rope to uh, look at. Wire. Let's go look at that. There's a sturdy metal wire tied to Nekumaru's left leg. The same wire is tied to his arms. It's almost like he was bound up or something. But even if they bound him up, the killer still had to deal with a robotic Nekumaru first. Who did this? And how were they able to bind Nekumaru? Also, the tip of this wire... It looks like he's been tied in a loop, but... What was the point of this? They've basically created a snare. They've lured him into the room, and then when he's come in, he's put his foot in the in the, the loop at the end, and they've just pulled it, and they've probably tripped him over. When he's been tripped over, they've uh, bound him up with, um... Or! Or! When they've tripped him over, they've switched him off at the back so he can no longer fight back, and, and, and to doubly make sure that he doesn't get up, they've tied uh, uh, the, the, the wire around him, and then they've just bludgeoned him to death. Free and easy. Done. Case solved. That's, that's, that, I think that's exactly what they've done. They've, they've put him to sleep. They made far too many, far too many uh, hints towards that's what was going to happen if Nekumaru ever got ripped. Oh, man. Somebody played really smart, but dirty, but very smart at the same time. Metal wire has been added. Okay, what else have we got here? Let's press tab real quick. Okay, so we've got the chest. It looks very, very dented. The cover of his chest is slightly open, but it won't open much more because the cover's all messed up. If only Kazuichi was here, we might have been able to open it. Jeez, what the heck could be going on right now? Where the hell is he? Um, what else do we have? We also had his face. Oh, no head. Huh? There's something protruding from Nekumaru's neck. Is this... Yeah, that's his sleep button, baby. That's right, it's a cutting edge function that puts my other functions to sleep, even if I have insomnia. Just press the goodnight button on the back of my neck and I'll be forced to enter sleep mode. Maybe the killer pressed this button and made Nekumaru enter sleep mode. But still, it's hard to think that the killer was able to easily press a button on the back of Nekumaru's neck. Even if Nekumaru was ambushed, it still wouldn't be easy. That's why I think they've, um, when he's fallen over, they've somehow managed it. Maybe after smacking him over the head first? I, d I don't know. Anyway, we've got oil, which is his his blood. This fluid flowing out of Nekumaru's body. Based on the smell, it seems like oil. It seems to be flowing at heaviest from Nekumaru's head, probably because that's where the fatal blow was dealt. This oil for Nekumaru, this might be similar to normal blood in humans. Which means all this oil is just a pool of robot blood. Anyway, it's a whole lot of oil. It's not going to be easy to clean up. No, now's not the time to worry about that. Well, oh, that might be another hint as well. If anybody has oil on them, then they're the killer. Easy. I guess for now, this is all I can do to investigate Nekumaru's body. Okay, what else have we got here? I should back off for now. Yes, we've got absolutely no more business there with Nekumaru's ripped body. Let's go and speak. Oh, broken pillar. Ah! Oh, he's cracked his skull off of that. They've tripped him over. He smacked off of that. The pillar next to the door is tipped over and broken. Did this pillar break when it fell over? Not just that, there's a strange liquid on the upper section of the pillar. Is this Nekumaru's oil? This is the only pillar that's tipped over, the other ones are still standing. Plus, behind me is the door to Grape Hall. And they're both fine, the two pillars on each side of that door haven't changed either. They're not tipped over. Hmm, it's strange.
strange that this pillar is the only one that's tipped over. It might mean something. Yes, it does mean something. I see. I got it. Got one. to me. This pillar is the weapon. The killer used this to beat up Coach Nick and Maru. This huge pillar. If you got socked by something like this, even Coach Nick and Maru wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah, well, that's impossible. It'd be way too heavy to wield as a weapon. Hajime, I grab that end over there. Huh? I'm gonna do it. We have to try it out, obviously. Come on, hurry up. Fine. Jeez, you're more forceful than usual. You ain't picking that up, baby girl. You ain't picking that up. It's no use. It's barely budging. And not surprised you're wasting my time here. I've got investigating to do. I tell you? All right. If that's how it's gonna be, my body can take it. Power! No, seriously, just give it up already. There's no way that's getting picked up. He's tripped over and his head off that. It's no use. It won't even budge. If two people can't even move this pillar, then it's impossible to use it as a bludgeoning weapon. Mm. Well, there's only one person who could have lifted something like this. Uh, Rub coach Nicky Maru, he's definitely the only one. Yep. Tipped over pillar has been added to the truth of bullet section of your handbook. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. We got anything else in here? So let's go speak to Chiaki real quick. See what's going on. Huh? What's this? Did you find something? Hmm. Under Nekumaru's body. No. Wait. There are small rock-like fragments underneath Nekumaru's body. You didn't need to correct yourself like that. And what do you mean rock-like fragments? Here. Look. So they're obviously off the pillar, right? There are lots of these small fragments. It's like they fell into Mekumaru's body. Well? But oddly enough, though these fragments are underneath Mekumaru's body, there are hardly any on top of his body. What's strange about that? Is there a problem they're not on top of his body? Hmm. Yep. If you don't know, it's okay. It probably means they're not that important. Wow, the sass right there. If you don't know, that's okay. If you're a big dumb, dumb, st stinky poo man when it comes to investigating, that's fine. You probably just don't know anything, you big dumb dumb. Thanks, Chiaki. Well, if you put it like that, now I can't help but think they're important. Yeah, they're obviously uh, parts of the pillar front. Yeah, we already know that. Anyway, Sonia, baby, what have you I got see. going? I see. Um, in this case's Monokuma file, there is no written time of death, right? Didn't that happen when Ibuki and Hyoka died too? Oh, did it? But the reason the time of death wasn't mentioned when those two died was because the time of death was key to the mystery surrounding their murder. Could that be the case this time too? Um, By the way, I would like to confirm this just in case. Hmm. Um, Ultimately, is it safe to assume that Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building? Well, that's the only thing we can think of. Even when we experimented with Chiaki's handbook and left it in Grape Tower, it still showed up in Strawberry Tower. Which means? Mm, the reason each tower's wall is different colours because the floor lighting is changing the colours. The reason Usami's floor portrait is different in each tower is because it's merely a projection. Yeah, that should be the case. Then, then it's decided. The two towers are the same building. Which means the scene of the crime is simultaneously Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower. Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building. How does that pertain to Nekumaru's murder? Hmm, okay. Oh, right, okay, because uh, who... That means it could have been the boy or a girl that ripped uh, Nekumaru. That's that's what that means, I think. Anyway, Akane, what you got going on, baby girl? Did you find anything? Hmm. 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 Looks like you haven't found anything yet. Leave it to me. We need clues, all right? I'll remember something, so just wait for it. Hmm. Looks like that's going to be a little yeah. hard. Oh, I remember. There is something I thought was weird. It happened early in the morning. You're going back that far? Come on, you noticed it too, all right? You heard that rumbling sound. Rumbling? Did I hear that rumbling? Oh, I did, I did, I did. That, what was that sound just now? That was Mekumaru falling over. That was him totally falling over because he was a heavy metal boy. Was that an earthquake? But I didn't feel the ground move. I guess I'm just thinking too much. Mm. Um. I was sleeping pretty heavy, so I wouldn't think about how hungry I was, but that noise woke me up. I ran out of my room without thinking, and after I did that, then what happened? Mm. I didn't see anything, and it looked like the others didn't come out of their rooms either. I felt pretty dumb for being the only one who came out, so I went back to my room and fell back asleep. In the end, I never found out what the sound was, but it's been on my mind for a while. You know, that now that you mention it, it does seem strange. Just what was that sound? Mm. 
you don't know either. Well, I should tell you in more detail. When I ran out of my room, I happened to glance at the lounge clock. Said it was around 5.30 a.m. Will you be able to find out anything with that info? I didn't think that rumbling noise happened that early in the morning. Ah, I'm not really sure if that noise pertains to the incident or not. Why? Hmm. What the hell? I went through the trouble of remembering that for you and you've got nothing? Jeez, you're so damn useless. She seems agitated. Well, that's understandable. Okay, Akane's account. Okay, there we go. Yes, I think that's definitely going to help us because 5.30 a.m. That was the sign that Meku Mario was uh, tripped over and hit the floor. That, sa that sounds like what that is uh, uh, going towards or leaning towards. So maybe we've almost got a time of death there. Do we have anything else in this room? Do Sammy... Uh, actually, what happens if I try and leave? There might be still things for me to investigate here. So there is something else. The door. Yes, let's go check out the door. See if there's anything... It's chained. What? What is this? The door at the far back has chains wrapped around the doorknob. It looks like it's a sturdy metal chain. It's wrapped around the doorknob from every direction and it even has a padlock on it. Did Meku Mairu not have one of them around his neck? Why did they do something like this? It was definitely 100% to stop people coming through from the Strawberry Tower. Perhaps this was used as an alternative to locking the door with a key. If that's the case, you wouldn't have been able to enter this tower from the Strawberry Hall side. Okay, after all, this door should lead to the Strawberry Hall. You are hmm. right. If they barred this side of the door with a chain, it would have been impossible to open it from Strawberry Hall. But still, why would they need to bar the door to Strawberry Hall? Let me think about this. Let me think about this. Okay, so... The room... You can't get in this room if the other door's open. So does that mean... The door, when Mechamaru came through it, was actually the strawberry side. So they've locked the strawberry doors to stop anyone from the strawberry side getting in. And obviously nobody from the, the grape side can get in already because that door will be locked because the, the cylinder isn't in the same place. I, I don't know. I don't understand completely the way it works. But it sounds like there is no way into this room once the chain is, is, has been uh, in there. So I think the murder was actually done in the strawberry tower, not the grape tower or the grape iteration of this room. I guess for now I've checked out everything in this place that caught my attention. Hmm. Hmm. What is it? You seem hmm. lost in thought. Well... The final dead room. Final dead room? What the heck? Why are you bringing up a police like that all of a sudden? So... Come on, how'd you make think? Well, the hammer on the floor, the chain wrapped around the door at the far back, and the wire that tied up Meku Maru. All the evidence at this crime scene consists of things we've never seen inside this building, doesn't it? But as long as we can't leave, then there's no doubt that that came from somewhere within this building. So that's why you mentioned the final dead room. Monokuma said beyond that room there's the ultimate weapon in a place called the Octagon. Yeah. yeah, so if you think of that place like an armory, then that's where the killer obtained their tools, right? Yeah. If so, let us go confirm it. No, that's too dangerous. If you go in there, you'll have to play the life-threatening game. Yeah. Then I'll be the one who tries to confirm it. Wh huh? What are you saying? You were the one that said the place was dangerous, right? Yeah. But man, it's noisy. I can't focus with all this noise. S sorry. It's not like that. Hmm? No, it's not you guys. There's a sound that's been ringing since before the investigation started. A ringing sound since before the investigation? That reminds me, you've been mentioning that sound for a while, haven't you? Hey, hey. I can't. Eh? What kind of sound is it? Um. It's like this high pitched alarm clock sound. That's Nekumara's internal clock telling him to wake up from his sleep thing. It's probably ringing from upstairs. Hmm. Could it be... Maybe it's better if we go check out that sound first. <sighs> Are you gonna go check it out? Uh, then you guys go. I'll... I'll stay here. Then... I shall wait here as well. Please be careful, you two. Sonia's okay, but... How come you're not going, Akane? Hey. Well, that sound is annoying, and I don't really feel like leaving. Hey, hey. Hajime, it's okay if it's just the two of us. Come on, Akane said she wants to stay here. Huh? Oh, I get it. She mm, she does want to leave Nikamara's side. I don't know if she's actually aware of that or not. Yep. Let's go, Hajime. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Chiaki girl. I should get out of here for now. Yes, we should go upstairs and find out what this ringing sound is. Now, is it going to be in our room or is it... Oh, it's the telephone! It's the telephone. I know exactly what it is. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Where, where? I'm lost. I'm lost. Where? Where? Where, where are the stairs? It's the telephone. It's the telephone. The boys over the other side will be telling us what's going on. Oh, that, what the hell? Is there an alarm on the clock? What? 
Jeez, it's so noisy. It looks like that phone is ringing. Okay, so it was right first time. The phone, huh? I guess I'll answer it. Let's go and answer it then, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get rid of that noise. Jiminy Christmas. Let's see. Just pick up the receiver and press the strawberry button, right? Damn right. Oh, you finally answered. That voice. Is that you, Fujiko? Jeez. Jeez, do you know how long the phone was ringing? I was getting worried that no one would pick it up. Well, what are you guys doing? Are you all still in Strawberry Jeez. House? Even if we wanted to go over there, we can. Looks like someone broke the damn elevator. It's not moving at all. And we can't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall because the door button is broken there too. So basically, we're just sin ducks. Not only is the elevator broken, but the Strawberry Hall door button is broken hey, too? Yeah. Hey, are you listening? Yeah, 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 I'm listening. Anyway, everyone in Strawberry House is safe, Where? right? We're safe, but we can't find Nick and Maru anywhere. Do you guys know anything? Didn't you hear the body discovery announcement earlier? Damn it. So that's what that was. So why did it have to be Nick and Maru? He just came back to us. Where was he killed? Grape Tower. When I went there this morning, he was already... I see. I see. Grape Tower. If the door to Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, we'd be able to enter the tower and... Holy sh**. That's it. The killer broke the elevator and the strawberry hall door, so they could split everyone up and prevent us from doing a proper investigation. Damn it, that dirt. What about another way? Is there any way you guys can come well, to this yeah. side? I guess we'll just have to let Kazuichi handle it. He said he'd take care of the elevator. I guess he's our only hope right now. You're right. Besides, if he doesn't stand out now, when the hell will he, right? It's about time. Kazuichi did something around like. here, eh? Based on what Kazuichi said, it's gonna be hard for him to fix the strawberry hall without parts. But he said he might be able to do something about the broken elevator. We'll be waiting. Are you guys gonna be Damn okay? right. Yeah, we'll just head over as soon as Kazuichi fixes the elevator. Until then, it's up to you, you bat. Hey, hey. So the call came from Strawberry House. Apparently the others can't come over here because the elevator is broken. There's no doubt that this is the killer's doing. They've prevented the others from coming to the crime scene. As long as the elevator is out of commission, those guys won't be able to investigate. Hmm. But that's not all. For some reason, even the door button to the Strawberry Hall is broken huh? too. The door button to Strawberry Hall? Um. Then that door is blocked from both sides? There's a sturdy chain tied around it from the inside, and if the button is also broken from the outside, then... Yeah, that seems to be the case. Hmm. Why did the killer need to block both sides of the door? Yes, good question. Why? I'm not sure, but there is something strange about um. that. I would like to investigate that in more detail, but if they can't come over here, then we can't go over there. Yep. Which means, for now, it's impossible to check the final dead room. I'm not entirely comfortable with you going over there, but regardless, it's impossible now anyway. Apparently, Kazuichi is repairing the elevator. All we can do now is for us to put our hope in him. You're right. You're right indeed, but Morikuma isn't going to wait. I doubt we'll have much time before the class trial starts. I hope Kazuichi can fix it soon, if not... <laughs> If not, we're messed up, guys. If not, we're kind of up a, a, a creek without a paddle, you know what I'm saying? Hey, are you even listening? Hey, are you even listening? Oh, what? Damn right. Nagito, I'm talking to you. Huh? Jeez. Don't hunt me. I figured you weren't even listening. Sorry, I was just thinking. <laughs> you were probably thinking about something messed up, weren't you? But I have been listening to you. Nekumaru was killed, right? Then that body discovery announcement was referring to him. Out of everyone here, it just had to be Nekumaru. After what he went through to come back to us. Damn it! Oh, it's tantamount to being killed twice. Truly, he was a man burdened by terrible misfortune. Hey. Okay, so now that we know the situation over here, is it alright if I go and fix the elevator? Ah, uh, is it alright if you wait just a little bit? Before you do that, we should... Did you call for me? Get the Marakuma file, right? <laughs> oh, he's here! Now then. It seems you guys have noticed the incident has taken place, so this is for you. Red bean bread and milk! And there's a bonus item! It's the Marakuma! Do really? your best. Come on, satisfy your hunger with this and do your very best on the investigation. <laughs> Why is the Monokuma file being treated like a bonus item? <laughs> Whatever, man, let's just eat. Eating should come first right now. Damn right. You're right. It's okay if you guys eat, but can you hear me out while you're at it? What do you yearn? What is it? 
Well, I was thinking about what we should do, and I wanted to discuss it. Even so. Thanks to the killer, we can't even go to the crime scene. We have to wait until Kazuichi fixes the elevator. True, there is no doubt that the killer is responsible, but it seems as though they made a huge mistake. There's no way the symbols of hope will give up just because of this little setback. There's no way everyone will just cross their arms and wait for the trial to start. We need to do everything we can on our end to prepare for the class trial, right? Well, yeah. Fine. It seems that we too shall begin the investigation on our end, though it remains unclear how much we can do. <laughs> Is this acceptable? If I show my serious side, things will not end with mere child's play. Okay, uh, I'm so glad. I knew you guys were pumped up from the start. How beautiful. Even though you guys are suffering from despair, I can see that you guys are still fighting for hope. Ah, such beauty. There's no higher honor for me than to investigate this murder with you guys, so we need to be grateful toward Nekumaru for becoming the foundation of this hope. Well, regardless, whose side should I be on for this case? The killer or the rest of you guys? I must make sure that I face this case's mystery properly if I'm going to find out which side is the true hope. Ah! <laughs> Investigate, so we're playing as Nagito now. Hey, you guys, why don't we try arranging the sequence of events in this case? You know, so we can properly understand the situation we're in. Fine. I have no objection. Proceed. Then, let's look back at what happened this morning. We tried to use the elevator so we could participate in Monokuma Tai Chi, right? Damn right. Since we're staying at Strawberry House, in order for us to get to the meeting spot at Grape Tower, we needed to use the elevator first and go to Grape House. That was before 7 a.m., since it was right before Monokuma Tai Chi. Man. But once we realized the elevator was disabled, I seriously panicked. Anyway. And since we couldn't do anything about it, we just tried to get inside the tower from Strawberry Hall. But when we actually got there, the button in the hall was broken. Thanks to that, we couldn't enter the tower at all. <laughs> so Fuihiko suggested that we use the phone and call Grape House. This, too, must be the will of causality. And that was everything that happened this morning. I must say, I'm surprised. I never expected that the elevator would be disabled. But then, how was Nekumaru able to go to Grape Tower? Man. Well, obviously, he went before the elevator was disabled. And when was that? No. Idiot, if we knew that, this wouldn't be difficult. <sighs> no, we might know what time he went to Grape Tower. You serious? Huh? Seriously? I... It was around sunrise. That's when I saw him going down to the first floor. What? You mean you personally witnessed Nekumaru going to Grape Tower? Hey, hey. When was this sunrise? Was it before that rumbling sound? Huh? Rumbling sound? Huh? What? You don't remember? Right after the clock in the lounge started ringing, we heard a rumbling sound. Did that clock even ring in the first place? Hey, hey, hey! You didn't notice that either? Seriously? That thing was super loud! Huh? That's weird. Hmm. I feel like we're not quite on the same wavelength. Well, it is what it is. There's no way you guys will ever be on the same wavelength as trash like me. Hmm. Looks like this is leading to an interesting development. Uh, Yes, yes it is. Okay, so look at the telephone. Is that what we need to do? Just as I thought. This telephone is connected to Grape House. If it means a communication was prepared, it's as if something like this was expected to happen. Well, I'm probably overthinking things. Probably, maybe not. Let's look at the clock real quick. This is the clock everyone's been talking about, right? Hmm. I never knew this clock had an alarm function. The alarm was set to 5.30 a.m. That probably means something. That, wait a minute, that was around about the time that... Akani told us, was it not, that she heard Nekumaru falling over? Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember there ever being an alarm there before. I'm going to have to check my, my previous videos, but I don't think their alarms were all, always installed there. I think somebody put them there. I really do. Okay, looks like things are getting quite interesting. I need to assess the situation properly. Okay, um, the portrait? Do I look at this? Hmm. Hope Speak Academy founder Izuru Kamakura. I understand why the school would immortalize such an important person in a portrait, but why would they put it in a place like this? What are they trying to show me? What are they trying to show you, buddy? Anyway, let's speak to Kazuichi real quick. Buddy, how's it going? Hey, Kazuichi, if you don't mind, can you inform me? That stuff about a rumbling noise and the ring clock. What was that all about? Seriously? You don't know? 
You're so kind, Kazuichi. Thank you for actually taking the time to explain it to uh. me. Huh? So that's how it is. Fine, I'll tell you. It happened last night. I was sleeping peacefully in my room when all of a sudden I heard this huge sound. Whoa, what the hell? The sound was super loud, so I rushed out of my room. As I went down the hall towards the lounge. Hey, what are you doing? This rock is... It's louder than the supreme ruler of the netherworld bellowing for a sacrifice. Don't go making all that noise so suddenly. It's not me. The wall clock just started ringing. I was just trying to stop it. Then hurry up and stop it already. I, I, I know. I'm in the middle of doing that. And that's when the sound finally stopped. Uh, Man, that totally freaked me out. Well, I'm definitely wide awake now. What did you do to me? My mental defenses were bombarded with sonic resonance. You! Fuyuhiko, was this not your doing just now? Shut up! Why would anyone do something so childish? Huh? You might have rushed over after hearing that sound, but you sure seemed to get there pretty fast. Well, yeah. Well, I didn't rush over here. I was in the lounge by coincidence. You fiend. Coincidence? Hmm? Huh? What? Do you doubt me? Hey. Whatever! I don't really give a crap, but it's 5.30 a.m. Oh, man. Man, thanks to Fuyahiko, I woke up early for no reason. I should go back to sleep. Huh? Huh? What was that sound? What's going on? Earthquake? This pressure. It did not feel like it shook. Hey, 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 There's hey, no hey. way this building is going to collapse, right? Oh. Hey, Kazuichi, stop clinging to me. Hmm. And that's what happened. I see. So you're the one who was clinging to Fuyuhiko. That's obviously wrong. That's not the important part. And what happened afterwards? Did you guys just separate? Hey. We decided to wait things out, but in the end, nothing else happened. Also. And not just that, we all felt really weak, so we decided just to go back to our rooms for a while. Hmm. I see. Yep. What you just told me now is extremely important. Thanks to that, I thought of one suspicious person. What? Who are you talking about? Me, of course. Huh? Huh? I mean, isn't it strange? I was the only person who didn't notice an alarm that was so loud everyone else came out of their rooms. Well, the same goes for that rumbling noise that you guys heard after that. Why, you? Hey, you better not be trying to confuse the sh** out of us. Of course I'm not. For now. Hey, hey, hey! That for now line is what's making us even more worried! Anyway, it seems there's no doubt that what you guys just told me is a very important clue. The wall clock alarm you heard first and the rumbling noise that came right after. Now then, how do these noises relate to this case? Hmm, wall clock has been added to the truth bullet section. I think whoever was doing it was doing it for two reasons. To distract the people from actually going down into Strawberry Tower, so it gave uh, whoever did the dirty deed time to lock the door, break the things and whatever, because they'll all be distracted with the alarm clock, and it wakes them up early, so they won't be thinking or in the right mind when it comes to investigating the case, because they'll all be tired, tired silly boys. And girls, obviously. That two, two warfare fronts there, I think. Anyway, Fuyuhiko, how you doing, buddy? Hey, you said that you witnessed Nekumaru at sunrise, right? Can you explain to me that in a little more detail? I... I was so hungry yesterday that I couldn't sleep. I figured it was nearly morning, so I went to go check the clock in the lounge. It turns out I was totally off and it was still around 5 a.m. Hey. And that's when it happened. I heard the sound of the door closing off in the distance. When I stuck my head out of the lounge... <laughs> I saw Nekumara's back. He was about to go down to the first floor. I thought about running after him, but I didn't have the energy or willpower to do it. If I knew something like this would happen, I would have mustered the strength to follow him. Hey, hey! But why would Nekumaru wander off so early in the morning? I... I was wondering about that too. I mean, I already knew I wasn't gonna get any sleep, so I just sat in the lounge, stared off into space for no real reason, and wait for him to come back. Jeez. And that's when the clock in the lounge started ringing. Thanks to that loud alarm, I completely forgot about Nekumaru. Until just now. Then, from the time you saw Nekumaru until the time the alarm rang, you were at the lounge the whole time, but... What were you doing during that time? By chance, were you thinking about everything that's happened so far and getting all choked up? What? Huh? Huh? Was I right? Of course not, asshole! You're, 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 you're completely wrong! 
I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're, you're absolutely right. And I thought you were reminiscing about Peku or something. Uh, that can't be, right? After all, you already know how pointless it is to cling to memories of the dead. Oh, oh, come on, Nagi- Oh, you're talking about his dead sister as well. You're savage, man. Savage. Yep, I get it now. Thanks to everyone's detailed information, I'm slowly getting a grasp of the situation. If I put the events in chronological order, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekumaru at 5 a.m. That's the time Nekumaru apparently went down to the first floor. At 5.30 a.m., the alarm clock in the lounge started ringing. When that happened, you two woke up and left your rooms to go to the lounge where Fuyuhiko was. Right after that, you heard a strange rumbling sound that didn't quite make sense. Let's make history. Now that I think about it, something might have happened to Nekumaru during that noise. If so, that must have been Nekumaru's final scream before he breathed his last. Hmm. Hold on, if Nekumaru died when we heard that sound, doesn't that mean we have an alibi? Alibi? Well, all three of them I were there, mean... weren't they? When we heard that rumbling noise, we were at the lounge, you know? If that's when the killer murdered Nekumaru, then we have a solid alibi! I get it. Can't argue with that. Hmm. It might be too soon to declare that just yet. We can't be certain unless we first clear up the mystery surrounding that rumbling noise. Rumbling noise, huh? Did something heavy fall over or something? Also, based on what everyone just told me, there's another thing I'm curious about. You all heard the alarm clock in the lounge go off just before the rumble. What do you suppose that means? Hey, hey haven't we talked enough? I really think I should repair the elevator soon. Oh my, you're still here? Ah! Once the elevator's fixed, I'm not gonna let you anywhere near it. And so, Kazuichi ran down the stairs, complaining for some reason. So, what should we do now? Ah, there's something I wanted you to do. After the elevator is fixed, there's something I want you to investigate. Huh? What is it? The clocks in the first floor lounges of both Grape House and Strawberry House. Right after that, you heard a strange rumbling sound that didn't quite make sense. Huh? huh? Why? I'll tell you later. Hey, Fine, but why are you asking me? You can investigate that yourself. I would investigate it myself, but, but by the time the elevator is fixed, there's a chance I might not be with you all anymore. Huh? Anyway, I'm counting on you. That b doesn't make any sense. Now then, here comes the main event. There's only one thing I can do for them. I can go to that place for everyone's sake. I can't let them face that danger. I must be the para who goes in their place. Oh, okay. So he's going to the deathly room thing. That's it. I should investigate one more time before I head over there. The elevator and the door at the far back of Strawberry Hall. Just in case, it might be good to check and make sure they are really blocked off. Okay, okay, that's that's perfect. Elevator time, baby. If I press the button next to the elevator, the door should open so I can ride it. But uh, nothing happens when I press it. Looks like it's definitely broken. Hey, what are you doing? You're getting in the way of my repairs. Hey, why did the elevator break in the first place? Oh, the killer malfunctioned the safety device. Look, you see that silver cover under the button? It looks like that's the elevator's control panel. They probably opened it up and messed with the settings. But the cover is locked, so they wouldn't have been able to open it unless they had some kind of tool. Hmm, are there any of those tools in this building? Uh. No, there shouldn't be. I don't really know if they forced to open with a tool anyway. The control panel on this side wasn't the one that was forced to open. I see. It's the control panel on the grape house side that's broken then. Yeah. If the one on this side isn't broken, that's the only thing I can think of. Pretty sure there should be a control panel over there too. Plus, the elevator is stuck on the grape house side. Wouldn't that mean the last person who used this elevator went to the grape house? Uh. Yep, it's official. The elevator was disabled on the other side. Hey. hey, I don't have time to talk with you. Hurry up and go away. Oh. Jeez, I'm trying to do repairs without any tools. No matter how much time I get, it won't be enough. If you don't have any tools, why don't you use this? Huh? Whoa! Is this a multi-tool? Where'd you get something like this? I had it with me before we even arrived at the fourth <laughs> island. If we're gonna explore a new island, it's essential to bring this kind of equipment, right? You serious? A guy like you has been walking around with a dangerous tool this whole time. Huh? Is there something wrong? <sighs> It is nothing. Then I'll let you have this. Your repairs might go faster now, right? But in exchange, I want you to do something. What? 
That moldy tool, that's a compass. After the elevator is fixed, I want you to ride the elevator and see how the compass re reacts. Uh, what the hell for? Well, to be honest, there's something I still don't understand regarding the structure of this building. So please, I really need this information to find out the relationship between the building and the elevator. Uh, dude, I don't really get it, but... Well, as long as I'm just checking a compass, I don't mind. I'm glad. Then I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, awesome. So basically, what they're saying now is... So... It's on strawberry. The room was on strawberry. Yes, yes, yes. The room was on strawberry. Mekumaru was lured in through this place. He didn't ride the elevator. They ripped Mekumaru. Came back through here. No. Yes, 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 yes. They ripped Mekumaru. Came back through. Rode the elevator back to Grape. The tower turned to Grape Tower. They destroyed the button on the Grape Tower side for the elevator. Went back to the murder scene. And that's when they tied up the door. To make it look like it was maybe done beforehand. Okay, so they're trying to muddle the order of events. I think that's what's happening anyway. Uh, yes, we're supposed to go this way. Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. The door, the door button. It's a strawberry hole door that leads to the tower. The button is broken. There's no way I'll open it. As I recall, based on what Fuyuhiko told Hajime over the phone, the other side of this door is also barred with chains. They must have been really cautious to go to the trouble of barring the door from both sides. Something about that seems a little suspicious. Let's make history. The killer's intent. I can think of only one explanation. Ah, Gundam. <laughs> Perhaps they intend to keep me from entering the scene of the crime. Listen well. Which means the killer was afraid. Afraid of the conclusion promised by my assumptions. Yeah, that was probably it. Okay, so yes. So when they came through, they obviously destroyed the panel here to lock this door so nobody from this side of the from well from strawberry tower could go in and see Nekumaru before the uh, the ripper finished their rip scene just as i thought there's no mistaking it the elevator and the strawberry hall door look like they're completely broken i didn't expect the contact elevator to be disabled from the grape house as long as it's disabled there's no way to move between houses which means the person who disabled the elevator would be stuck at grape house that person it should still be a grave house, but no. It's too soon for me to form an answer, but I won't be too late to find the answer even if I finish investigating that room. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We all know what room your boy's talking about. We all know what room your boy's talking about! The final dead room. Only those who win the life-threatening game contained within will reach the octagon. And inside the octagon, the ultimate weapon awaits. There's no doubt Nekumara's killer has been to that place. No matter where I search, there are no weapons anywhere in this building. Regardless of the weapon used to kill Nekumaru, the killer must have obtained it there. If that's the case, I should get going. Also, unlike anyone else, I don't mind dying at all. That's all the more reason why I should go. Yes, buddy. Time to go in the final dead room. Oh boy, there's a six on the wall, seven, there's a monokuma on the floor. I see. So this is the final dead room. It feels a little eerie. I hope I don't get scared. Uh-oh, we've been locked in, haven't we? Did the door just lock? I see. The door's designed to automatically lock. It's not like I would have turned back if it stayed unlocked. <laughs> I thought the door finally opened, now it's locked again? I figured you'd turn up since I haven't seen you in a while, but I never expected to see you here. <laughs> Nagato! Huh? Why are you in such a dangerous place? Same as you. Why are you here? I, 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 I heard the body discovery announcement and I thought something happened in this room. And you got locked in here when you came inside. You're a fool from head to toe. I'm truly ashamed. Well, not that I care, just make sure you don't get in my way. Um, get in your way? The life-threatening game is gonna start soon, right? It'd be annoying if you got in my way. Uh, are you planning on doing it? Well, if I don't, I can't get out of here, right? And besides, the only way that trash like me can be useful is by risking my life for this everyone else's sake. That's wrong! You're wrong, Nagato is not trash at all! There's no such thing as a human being who doesn't deserve to live! <laughs> I know, I'm being heartwarming right now, but my heart is super scared and pounding like crazy! Are you sure you're not just excited? You know, isn't it exciting to think that I can finally be useful for the sake of those who shouldn't shoulder hope? Now then... 
about this so-called life-threatening game? Escape! Oh, wow. Nagito, is there anything you don't get? Just ask me. By all means, I'll help you and make sure you get out of here. Bring it on! Escape game! That sounds like something a teacher would say, but I shouldn't expect too much from her. Okay, okay, okay. So we have got to get out of here. Oh, there's a Monokuma there. What do I do with him? Monokuma? It's some Monokuma you blushy. You want me to punish you guys? No. You stop being filthy. <laughs> Looks like this plushie talks when you squeeze his tummy. Chills, chills, kills! Life-size Monokuma. Now for the special prize of only ten thousand dollars. An advertisement? Hmm, that does seem a little bit odd. Watch the news. Is that what that says? It says, watch the news in blood. <laughs> yeah, I might get cursed just by looking at it. <laughs> it's just a secret code. Plus, it's probably a pretty common one. Huh? Secret code? Nagito, do you happen to know what this means? Yeah, it's a common riddle. Is it? Is it actually a common riddle? Watch the news? I don't know what that means. I genuinely don't. Is that, is that an elevator here? Oh, it's a closet. There's just one hanger hanging in the closet. It might be useful for something, so I should grab it just in case. Obtained hanger. Okay. Is that it for in here? There's something written in blood at the back of the closet. Um. Looks like the number five. These blood symbols alone don't make any sense, but maybe if I combine them with something else? Yes, probably with this uh, pad that's on the wall. What's that? I think it's a five. Because there's quite a few. There's a number pad there. There's five. There's three. There's six and seven. Can I just try that? Five, three, six, seven? May as well try and go for it straight away, right? I'm pretty sure I have to input a four-digit no password. Problem. I have a secret plan. If you input 9999 password combinations, it'll eventually open. I'll leave that mindless work to you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've just died as well. Password to open this. I have a feeling that the hint is close by. Uh, well, I, I can't remember what it is now because you talk for so bloody long. 5367? Okay. Oh. Leave it to me. If you don't know something, don't overwork yourself. Feel free to ask me anytime. No, money me, I'm not. I'm not asking you. I'm gonna solve this myself. Watch the news. Okay, so there's something, there's a clue about that. There's a three up here. I presume you're gonna say the same thing. There's something written in blood on the wall. Okay, number three. Okay, so we, we, we know what numbers are. We can't do anything there. There's uh, a, what's this? What is this bad boy when it's at home? Hmm, this must be a locking device for the iron bars. I probably have to put a four digit Alrighty. password code. Okay, oh no, I'm not, you're right. But then there doesn't seem to be any buttons for inputting a password. Uh-oh. It looks like it might be under this lid, but it doesn't seem to open. Not just that, what's this red light that's on top of this device? Yeah, what are these lights? There doesn't seem to be any buttons for putting the password. Right, okay. Well, I am completely lost at the moment, guys. Let's just keep having a look about the place, see what we can find. Ah, it's a laptop. Looks like it's on, but it's locked, so I can't really access it. It doesn't look like you can input the password. How are we gonna turn it on? I don't know, maybe take it out for a nice steak dinner. Maybe it'll open up for us. What have we got here? Drawers? Anything in them? Ah, pliers, huh? These might be useful for something, so I should grab them. Yes, we probably should grab them. Anything in this drawer? It's locked. It won't open. So we need a key for that one. What have we got in here? Mmm. Mmm, this looks like some kind of password. Okay, so we got S, M, and then we're missing four in the middle there. First letters of the days of the week are probably the password. Ah, okay, okay. I doubt it's that simple. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I genuinely don't know at this point. Watch the news. This television looks broken. Can we turn it on so we can watch the news, maybe? I don't know. There's the exit there. Oh, what's this on the floor? Hmm, there's something written in blood on the floor. Um... This is the number four, right? Number four, huh? It looks like a different symbol to me. Like, for instance, a symbol you would often see on maps. What What would it be on maps? I, I can't really read it just now. I'm gonna have to have a little think about this. Watch the news. Is there anything else in this place? I don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna leave it off here. We're playing as Nagato for once. This is crazy that we're actually playing as somebody else, especially because I have to constantly do another accent, but I hope I actually did Nagato's accent a little bit of justice there. But wow, 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 w
And I'm so confused by it at the same time. I think we're getting there with Meku Maru. I think we're getting there. Please don't tell me in the comment section below. I don't want to see any spoilers because I'm really, really excited about where this puzzle is going. I'm a little bit worried as to uh, who I think it is. If it's true, don't tell me if it is or not, I'm going to be very sad at the end of this trial. Very, very sad and angry, probably, just like the last one. But either way, we're going to be carrying on with that. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then please hit that like button. It really, really is appreciated. I will see you on Wednesday for when we solve this one. And maybe we'll have the start of the trial, depending on how quickly we get through this. But either way, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I've been Razbowski. You've been the beautiful Raspberries, as always, for watching. And I love each and every single one of you. Goodbye!